sometimes the obvious thing is predictable, which leads us to the main event with Sting and Darby. Okay. The Young Bucks, tornado match, AW tag team titles. What a winner mm. of a segment this was. This was, it was not a five-star match, but it was a 17-star segment. It's, so, yes, it's Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus Darby Allen and Sting. We have Ric Flair now introduced just as being Ric Flair. Rick, uh, Ricky Steamboat is the guest timekeeper. Nikita Koloff, Magnum TA, and Scotty Riggs are all shown in the crowd. And then we get a mini movie. Sting goes into a movie theater to watch his own This Is Your Life film. We have pictures from the after mags. We have clips from New Japan. Candid private shots with Ultimate Warrior and his NWO buddies arriving in AEW. He watches himself, watches himself taking stupid bumps and cringes at his own bad decisions. He teams with a great Muda repeatedly, wrestles at Wembley Stadium, and the whole time he's very emotional and is very introspective and very nostalgic. And then it shows those fucking bucks beating up at kids with baseball bats, and it changes. He's sneering. He's pissed off now. And he, we see him whipping ass for a while. And the curtain closes, and Sting just looks in the camera and says, it's showtime for the last time. Let's do this! I was hoping that he would say, it's showtime for the last time. Let's fucking go! <laughs> hey, he's the man of the Lord. He is. It's he's, true. It's not gonna change. That's not going to change. So they play his... This entrance was so awesome. They play his AEW theme, theme song. Out comes 1980s USA Sting guy. Yep. And which, the place went nuts because they didn't know what it was. They were they yeah. thought he was going to wrestle like that. And then out comes Wolfpack Sting guy. Yeah. Who actually looked more like Kevin Nash except for the face paint, but because he's you know, eight feet tall. Oh, the but, irony. But, yeah. But, the uh, irony. Yeah, that's true. I thought of that. But uh, they come out, and I didn't realize this until the announcers pointed it out. Those are his kids. Yeah. Those were his sons that got beat up. But the Bucks beat them up. And, and then man, the one who uh, the one who played Wolfpack Sting, that broken jump. Oh, that's the tight end. At, yeah, the, the yeah. Ma major college tight end. That guy's Holy an athlete. Holy shit, that guy's a jump. Probably a better athlete than his dad, if we're being honest. He's bigger and, uh, well, and much younger now. But uh, <laughs> they just... If that, uh, if that fucker's still playing football at 64, I'll say he's a better athlete than his dad. Otherwise, it ain't happening. Fair enough, fair enough. So Darby starts with a dive, and it's a tornado no DQ tag match. And for a while, well, first we should mention that uh, Magnum TA, Scotty Riggs were in the crowd. I did. Lex Luger was there in his oh. wheelchair. We didn't see him, but he was okay. definitely there. Good, and good. I, I actually bring that up because uh, you know we had Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat, and you know as we get to review the match, you know we get to the point where they both get their asses kicked and beaten up, and Sting's all by himself, and Darby's you know cut to shreds. And there's like there's no one to save Sting, and I, I just remember thinking, I don't know how, but Luger's got to save the day. Like maybe he can turn uh, off the lights or something as some yeah. distraction or like uh, something. He's gonna be the guy. That would have been nice. But man, they didn't do it. But no. yeah, they had a lot of guys there watching this. Yep. And uh, yes, it started with a crazy dive. It starts with a crazy dive, and it's just four guys, four baby faces beating up two heels for a while, and uh, the young Stings are doing Stinger splashes and. They're not wrestlers. They're athletes. They're not wrestlers. They're they're mistiming these jumps and almost coming up short. But hey, who cares? It's all fun games. Sting gets a double scorpion on the box, and I actually thought this may go one minute, but uh, they escape. And then Sting, the Sting Juniors just disappear. They just leave, and they're never seen again. They don't show up to help their dad. And there were times he really, really could have used the help. Yeah, I thought they'd at least get like laid out or something like that, or yeah, yeah. you know, brawl backstage and lock him in a room. Bucks lock him in a room or something. But yeah, whatever, yeah, so, something. So they all brawl up on stage. They pass a random woman on a thong, woman in a thong. It may have been. It was Swerve's dancers. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, yeah. who who had their faces to the camera the entire time. So they, yeah, whatever. Uh, they're probably on the stage, and Sting and Darby are both thrown off the stage through tables. Uh, the crowd is chanting, fuck the young bucks. Darby's alone with the ring, and from a, you know, pure execution of wrestling move standpoint, the part with Darby Allen one on two against the young bucks is the best part of this match. But that was a very small portion of this match, mostly as I'm doing a bunch of crazy shit. They had broken out chairs and panes of glass earlier, and uh, they had laid a pane of glass out across a half dozen chairs and they had a giant ladder in the ring. Darby is not... You know, this is no joke. This was easily, 
easily a 12 foot ladder yes. maybe it, 14 it was easily twice as tall as darby more than twice yeah darby's not six feet tall but he's a grown man he it was so big he was having trouble carrying it but he gets it set up and he climbs to the very top of this thing and he had laid out a buck across the glass but that buck moved and darby does a sting beat his chest and dives off he goes through the glass which explodes and rips him into fucking ground beef dude you ever looked at Swerve's back? A few times, a few times. I mean, he, this dude's got scars and lumps everywhere from, I don't know how many matches he did, but one of them for sure was that... Uh, Hell of War match. Hell of War match. Yes. And uh, Darby's back looked a hundred times worse here than anything yes. in that Hell of War match. I just watched that match like a year ago. And, and this was much more gruesome. Like I, 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 It's kind of a, I don't know if I should call it a joke, but I, I commented on Twitter that aside from Darby needing a back transplant... This match was perfect, and that's that's essentially what he's going to need is a full back transplant. I mean, otherwise, it's just going to be like a yeah. topographical map on his back. Sting made a comment about Darby needing stitches afterwards. I'm like, no, no, he, he needs skin. Stitches? Gr- that's what he said. Jesus. There's not enough thread in North Carolina. I was going to say, you kidding me? This was so disgusting. And, uh, and they, I mean, they had so many doctors rushing over there, and, you know, like one of the announcers goes, Doctor's heading over with gauze. I'm like, oh, good. Well, as long as he's got gauze. Yeah. And then, you know, Darby later comes back, and it's like, uh, there was no gauze on him. He's fucking just bleeding. their skin hanging off him. It was so disgusting. Yeah, that looked like it sucked. So, the, I don't even want to say the good news, but if you are going to do a bump like this, make it count. Darby was not seen again until the end of this match. Like, 10 minutes went by where Sting makes his way down to ringside and it's Sting versus the Bucks one on two for for I say forever, but that sounds like it's a complaint. It's not for, it's not a complaint, but it was a long, long one on two battle. It's funny because Darby takes this bump, glass goes flying everywhere, flesh goes flying everywhere, blood splatters everywhere, and Jim Ross goes into his speech about somebody is saying they know how to fall. Jim, that was not the time. No human being watching this thought that was a safe thing to do or something they would be able to re- replicate at home. That was completely insane. On the Darby Allen scale, that was complete insanity. So it's Sting versus the Bucks for a long time. He's awesome. They're awesome. But eventually he is overwhelmed. And they, they, they could do a pattern of big move, dramatic kick out at two. Big move, dramatic kick out at two. And each one's a little more dramatic. And the Bucks getting a little more frustrated. And they hit the evp trigger that gets to and like nicholas is furious he almost goes after the ref matthew has to calm him down they grab sting's hands very dramatic shake of the hands pleasure doing business with you second evp trigger he kicks out at one place just goes ballistic they put him down with the double super kick they go for the newly renamed tony khan driver but when Nicholas goes to the top rope, Darby returns, maybe literally from the dead this time, shoves him off the top through a table, and uh, Sting just gra- he grabs Matthew for uh, the death drop. He's uh, like a position for the death drop. He's looking around, taking it all in one last time, and he hits this death drop, and Matthew kicks out. <laughs> like, oh, God damn it, they got me with that one. So he takes it all in again. Darby, whose back is a war crime, Hits a coffin drop right on top of Matthew. Just squishes him. And Sting turns him over. It's midnight. It's Monday morning. The place is going ballistic. It's, it's, it's impossible to tell you how white hot this crowd was. And Matthew frantically, frantically taps out. This will not be everyone's cup of tea. Because it was completely violent and insane. But it's undeniable. There were five-star moments in this match. It's had to be the greatest retirement match of all time. And I saw Muto versus Chono. Which I loved. But anyway, this uh, this match was fucking perfect. This was a perfect retirement. It was exactly what it would have been. I would change nothing about it. Not one single thing. Although I wouldn't have had Darby go through glass. I'd had him go through like a table or something. Because he was so high up. Like, he could have gone through ten tables. And, you know, it would have been just as fantastic. He didn't need to be slashed all to bits. That's the only thing I would change. Everything else, this was perfect i was so happy and i was actually happy before the finish because like once all the legends got laid out it's like 
You ain't laying out all these fucking legends and then beating Sting on the same night. That's not happening. That's why I was trying to figure out, like, can Luger turn off the lights or can Luger do some shine a light on him or something? Like, something's got to happen where Sting is victorious in the end. He's got to get his revenge for what happened to Flair and Steamboat. But, you know, he did it by himself, him and Darby. And they got the submission. I was so happy. I just thought it was fucking great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And we got a snippet of Sting's speech. He thanked Greensboro a lot. Said it was a night he would never forget. He and Darby are both risk takers. The crowd is chanting, you still got it. He tells us, I'm getting time cues. And the screen goes to black. Yeah. (laughs) Well, he missed his time cue. But the whole thing is up on Twitter. Yes. We'd like to go watch it, everybody. Yes. So uh, I will never forget this show. No. An all-timer great show. Maybe the best show we see all year. Maybe the best match we see all year. For God's sake, buy the show, get the replay, buy it again. It's worth it. You know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, there were arguments before the show. Not really arguments, but like people saying, you know, is Sting going to go on last or is that world title going to go on last? Should Sting win or, you know, should he put someone over on the way out? And the fact of the matter is like, you know, you could argue these things if you wanted, but let's be real. Of course Sting should have fucking gone on last. And of course he should have won. Like, when you really think about it, it's not even debatable. And now that you've seen it, it's like anything else would have been fucking stupid. Stupid! Mm-hmm. So, this is, I think, I mean, I, I can go back and look at notes, I guess, but pretty sure this was my favorite AW pay per view ever. I right loved there. it. It was just great. So happy. Yeah. And I still mean to watch the first fucking match. So it probably is even better than I thought. You should go watch that. Yes, it's worth taking your time to go watch. Right, we'll have to go back and check that out. But hmm. uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.